Okay. Uh, Thank you very much for uh, being with us for this introduction of the IntelliCage, which is a fully automated home cage phenotyping system. And in the past decades, uh, to model human diseases, a large number of rodent models have been generated, including genetically modified animals. And to assess the biological function of these modifications, very sensitive phenotyping tools are required and critical in order to detect the changes in behavior. And I hope I can convince you that the IntelliCage is probably a very useful tool for this kind of phenotyping work. Um, in most of the behavioral labs and core facilities today, if you look into the strategy of testing, you will end up with a lot of different rooms filled with a lot of different behavioral equipment, such as the rotor rod or, uh, by the way, can you see my pointer? I guess so, yes. Um, yes such as the, the rotor rod or the y maze and there are tons of different behavioral apparatus in order to look at different types of phenotyping different types of uh, learning and memory paradigms however most of these established tests have their shortcomings usually they require as i mentioned a lot of lab space a lot of time and also a lot of power of the researcher in order to perform all these behavioral tasks. In addition, one of the critical things is also that they require usually a lot of animals and this has something to do with the data variability, which is very often high in these animal models. Um, since uh, Krab and Walston published uh, these data on four different strains of mice tested by a variety of different researchers on the elevated plasmase. We know that the source of the data variability in behavioral experiments are mostly the human experimental. And this kind of data variability is also responsible for uh, problems to reproduce data which has been published before. So this is just as an example, a study published by um, Bayer uh, in which only two thirds of the projects could be, could replicate basically the already published results. And uh, talking about Bayer and pharma industry, it is also a big question how translational is the behavioral tasks which we are using today. So what we are all interested in is we are trying to find uh, treatment strategies for our patient which are mostly not isolated. But what we do in our daily research is we are using social animals, rats, mice, and test them mostly isolated in a totally artificial environment. And um, one of the uh, one of the things which the IntelliCage can do is basically bring back this social component into the lab and it might help to improve some of these uh, limitations of standard procedures. So Bring back the social component into the lab and test animals in a home cage is one of the hallmarks of behavioral testing today. And of course, these kind of testing should follow the three R principles, which means replace, reduce and refine. And one way to reduce the number of animals, for instance, is the reduction of data variability, which in the IntelliCage can be achieved by excluding the human experimenter and the fear and anxiety, which is associated with the handling of the animals. And uh, this leads basically to an, an increased standardization within the lab, but also in between labs. So, in taking all these points into account, Professor Lipp and his team at the University of Zurich developed the IntelliCage around 20 years ago. 
And the IntelliCage as such is basically available for mice as well as for rats, although most of the studies have been done so far with mice. And in general, it consists of four of these operand conditioning corners, which are equipped with the sensors and the actors of the system. So food is available freely in the food grid, whereas water or any rewarding solution which can be used is only possible to get in the uh, operand conditioning corners. Testing an individual animal in a group of animals uh, requires basically an individual mark, and this is done by using an RFID chip. And this RFID chip is basically an SC injection into the neck of the animals. And uh, whenever an animal is working in the corner, it has to go through an RFID antenna, which is this gray antenna here. And very importantly, if the animal is working there, it blocks the entrance for uh, the other animals so that the system is sure which animal is doing what in the cage. Each corner is equipped basically with two notebook units. And what the system can measure is basically, of course, in the specific context, the number of visits. And this is done by a thermosensitive presence sensor in conjunction with the information of the RFID from the animal. The system can measure the number of nose pokes by a light beam sensor, which is, which is placed in front of the nose poke unit, as well as it can measure the number of licks. Each side of the corner is equipped with three independent signaling lights above the automated door, which gives access to the reward or the water, depending on what you uh, have in your water bottles. As a negative reinforcement, you can uh, provide the animals with an air path, and this is useful for for instance, for avoidance learning. These sensors and these actors of the IntelliCage can be combined to generate a variety of different behavioral tasks. So here on the right side, you see basically uh, the parts of the IntelliCage which can be programmed or modified. So for instance, you can use and train an animal on a certain corner so that you end up with a spatial learning task, which is pr pretty much similar to what you do in the Morris water maze. Um, you can take the number of nose pokes into account in order to achieve operant conditioning tasks like the progressive ratio task. And for instance, you can use the software which allow you to introduce delays between a correct response in a corner and opening of a door. And that would help you to achieve, for instance, or to end up with an impulsivity task, for instance. Um, talking about the software, so basically the software of the IntelliCage has three main parts. One is the designer, one is the controller, and one is the analyzer. In general, the software is very user-friendly and graphically oriented. Um, the designer is used for designing the behavioral task, which is then saved and loaded into the controller, which is basically executing the behavioral paradigm. So coming back to the limits of standard phenotyping, such as the data viability and reproducibility, and what we are talking about the translational point, um, the fully automated behavioral testing in a social environment, such as the IntelliCage, can probably help you out to overcome these uh, problems. And one of the first study which has been uh, published by Hans-Peter Lipp uh, already 2005 shows exactly an attach or, or 
uh, go exactly behind that point. What uh, the researchers have done here, so they compared locomotor activity and exploration in two different uh, or in three different strains of mice in two different labs in either a classical uh, experimental driven behavioral paradigm such as around the open field in this case and compared the same locomotor activity and exploration in the IntelliCage in a fully automated system and you see by eyes that the variability between the labs is reduced compared to the standard method. Using a valproic acid model for autism in a spatial learning and a reversal learning tasks um, in the IntelliCage, a group in Poland demonstrated that uh, an automated testing leads to really reproducible data. And this is also something which is uh, quite nice to see and to read. Um, one of the big advantages of the IntelliCage is that the time of testing is basically unlimited. So this is a 24 hour test system and whatever an animal is doing inside the cage will be monitored. Of course, locomotor activity and circadian activity can be monitored only indirectly by using the number of visits. But if you look into that data, and this is just an example um, of a paper from Cordida from Sweden, um, which uh, used a transgenic Alzheimer model and characterized in the IntelliCage. If you look at the locomotor activity data, you see a, the clear pattern which you usually see in, in other systems. Uh, such as you see a habituation to the system, you see a clear distribution of activity, which is much higher during the dark phase compared to the light phase. And you see also things like um, age dependent decline of locomotor activity. In addition, there was a recent review, which so if people are interested in this uh, 20 years IntelliCage review um, is a good overview of basically all the studies which have been done so far with the IntelliCage. I mean, also in this review, it is pointed out that the activity in the IntelliCage is comparable with the activity in a standard home cage setup. As you can see here, the C57 Black 6 animals, they show a reduced uh, locomotor activity during the dark phase compared to the bulb C and the other strain of mice, which can be seen in the IntelliCage as well as in a regular home cage. A clear advantage of the IntelliCage is also the possibility to automate time consuming experiments. And I talked already about the Moros water maze. And for those of you who did a water maze in their life, they know exactly what I'm talking about. So we're talking about seven to 10 days experiment lasting the whole day, staying in the basement and drying animals and release them in the pool. So for those which are unfamiliar, the water maze is basically a tank in which the animal is swimming around, find a submerged platform and then remember the position of that platform based on outside cues. And this is one of the classical spatial learning tasks. And if you try to transfer this concept into the IntelliCage, you have basically two possibilities to do that. One of them is a appetitive approach in which you take or in which you provide the animals with a super solution in one of the uh, corners. Then the animals start to prefer that corner. And the other approach would be an aversive way in which you are using the air path function of the IntelliCage and you provide an air path in one of the corners and the animals start to avoid that corner. That's also something which I took out of that recent review. Um, there are several papers published and which spatial learning in which a direct comparison between uh, spatial learning in the IntelliCage and spatial learning in the Morris water maze um, was provided. And one of the things you can see in this 
Alzheimer model here on the top is you see a decreased cognitive ability in the IntelliCage spatial learning task, similar to what you see in the in the Boris water maze. And does a one gene inactivated animal usually leads to a increase in cognitive ability and also this increased cognitive ability is has been shown in the IntelliCage as well as in the water maze. In addition to that, it is very interesting to see that uh, very complex and time consuming operant conditioning tasks such as behavioral sequencing tasks or DRL, which usually take months in the classical Skinner box, can be automated. So this is, for instance, a study published by the group of Isabel Mansui in which uh, maternally separated and unpredictable stress uh, mice has been uh, used for this type of really, really complex uh, operant conditioning tasks. A big advantage is that the animals are individually marked with an RFID transponder in the IntelliCage. So one of the core symptoms of depression is anhedonia. And anhedonia is usually investigated by free sucrose consumption in the home cage. Now we are facing the problem that in order to find out who is drinking how much, you have to isolate the animals under normal circumstances because under normal circumstances they have they are not chipped with an RFID chip. So Therefore, and in contradiction to that, um, social isolation is also a method to induce a depressive flag phenotype in animals. So therefore, it would be much better to do that in grouped house animals at free consumption of sucrose. And this has been done here in that pub published paper by uh, your branches group, where you see here, uh, a decrease in uh, sucrose consumption um, compared to the uh, control animals. And he showed also quite nicely in his paper that you can use also an active component, means the progressive ratio in which the animals have to no spoke in order to get a constant reward. Here also we have a reduction of the breakpoint. So two methods in order to assess anhedonia as a core symptom of depression using the IntelliCage has been published in that paper. Um, finally, the IntelliCage can be used as a high throughput behavioral screening tool. So first of all, it is possible to, dependent on the computational power, uh, it is possible to run up to eight cages with a single software license which ends up in a large number of animals which can be tested at the same time. And it is also possible to program automated test batteries of multiple behavioral tasks without any interruption in between so that the animals run through a series of behavioral tasks without any interruption. And some of these automated test batteries have been already published. So there is here an autism model, for instance, and there is in the context of a pain model, also a study which has been published, a, a serious behavioral experiment. And uh, this is another example here of um, Professor Hunt and Ian McGregor's group in, in Australia, which uh, looked into a meningitis model, which uh, shows several adaptation periods. And then there was a light discrimination task involved and then a patrolling task, which is quite similar to an eight bomb radial armies task. And this has been followed by several reversal tasks. So for those of you um, who are interested in this kind of uh, automated test batteries, uh, it would be good to have a look into that uh, published samples. So in conclusion, I hope I could convince you that uh, the IntelliCage is quite flexible. 
uh, for many application and many different animal models. Um, the results are pretty much identical to uh, time consuming standard methods. And one of the big advantages definitely is that the animals live in their social group and uh, which increases the animal welfare and probably also the translational value of the study. One of the effects of uh, decrease of the data variability is of course the higher standardization between and also within labs and due to the fact that the IntelliCage is a very compact uh, device um, it reduces the required lab space and due to the fact that the animal uh, the data variability is reduced it may also have an effect on the number of animals and the costs which you finally need so thank you very much for your attention and well i took one minute more sorry about that um and i'm happy to take your questions okay thank you holger um let's see um one question um can you hear me i don't know if i'm live now i can hear you <laughs> yes yeah, super you still um, see my presentation no yeah we see the presentation so you showed one of these pictures where the mice were standing on the red houses and they were eating in the top grid. Um, is there a boundary on how old the animals can be or which strains you can use in IntelliCage, for example, if they have motor deficits? Well, the uh, um, the age of the animals, of course, the locomotor activity is reduced with age. And of course, if they have motor deficits, uh, they they are reduced. But there are little tricks in terms of uh, you can increase the bedding, for instance, so that they don't need to jump that high to come into the uh, corner. Or um, people have used kind of little stairs in front of the doors to uh, in front of the operant conditioning corners uh, in order to make it easier for the animals to go in there. But you can measure old animals as well as uh, young animals. OK. I mean, young animals, I have to admit that um, we usually say that the animals should be around three months of age. And in order to avoid that two animals can go into a corner at the same time. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Um, we have another question. Thank you for your presentation. Is it possible to assess a social status and hierarchy within the colony in the IntelliCage? Can you say something about that, Holger? Well, what you can do is there, there is a so-called competition task published which uh, in which you train basically all the animals to a single corner. And this gives you some information about the competition. Um, there are papers published in which treatment effects on that competition um, have been shown. Um, and of course, if you train all the animal to a single corner, then you would at least get the most dominant animal, which, yeah. which would make probably take most of the resources. I knew that we used to use um, drinking sessions uh, in our in my old lab, which definitely made them struggle a bit more to get into the corner if they only had one or two hours per day. So that might be one way of just getting uh, the, yeah, they're a bit more competitive of getting into the corners. So we have yeah, gotten a few questions. Yeah, temporal learning, exactly. Yeah. So um, if we don't make all of the questions today, um, don't worry, we will answer them all and you will get all of them. So let's see here. Um, um, one question is if it's possible for two adult mice to enter the corner at the same time. That will be pretty hard. So because the system is designed in a way that um, only one animal can enter a corner, um, you should never say it's impossible because I mean, if you have very, very lean animals, which are pretty small on, I don't know, very funny strains, it might be possible, but um, in the strains you usually use such as black six mice, um, this is more or less impossible. 
And if so, you have a log file in which you can detect these kind of problems. Yes, perfect. So I think one last question for you, Holger. Um, the question came up, how do you introduce 16 male mice to a cage without causing fighting and aggressions? Do they have to be litter mates? It's a good question. Yeah, it's a good question because usually if you if you have 16 animals, uh, males uh, putting together just in front of an experiment, uh, they probably would fight for a new hierarchy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, there are a couple, there are basically, uh, I would say about 40 to 60 is the percentage. So about 60 percentage of the studies have been uh, done with female mice in which the aggression is much more reduced. Uh, and with male mice, there is always a possibility to reduce the competition and the aggressive status of the animals by uh, putting them together right after weaning and uh, grow them together in a larger group. That would be one possibility. Uh, it's really also dependent on the strain on the individual animals, um, but there are ways to overcome that also. The question is if you have independent data and this is one of the goal so that um, you train the animals not at the same time to use a corner and that might also decrease the competition. Exactly. That's what I experienced too, that they were kind of busy doing their stuff in the corners, which uh, I didn't see any aggression in my males. Um, they were very kind to each other. So thank you guys for all of the questions. They're rolling in here. I'm very happy to see that, but I have to move on. Uh, thank you, Holger, so much for your lovely presentation. Thank and you. And I'll give over soon to our second um, speaker today. That is Dr. Votele Volka from the University of Helsinki. We're very glad to have Votele here today. He's the director of the Mouse Behavioral Phenotyping Facility at the University of Helsinki. And Votela studied medicine at the University of Tartu, and he has done his PhD in physiology at the Neuroscience Center at the University in Helsinki. And we're most happy to have Votela here today because he's an expert in phenotyping in methods and in uh, refining methods and refining husbandry methods, especially in mice. So it's perfect to have you here because you also have hands on experience with IntelliCages, Votela, and that's why it will be lovely to hear your view on um, yeah on the cages and how you are using them in your lab. So um, I'll hand over to you. Thank you for being with us and the stage is yours. Thank you, Emilia, for kind introduction and thank you for inviting me. Uh, I hope you can now see my screen presentation and you can hear me. Is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> Uh, thank you, and then thanks to Holger for uh, uh, extensive coverage of IntelliCage. Uh, so maybe I will repeat some things, but uh, we can uh, state that repetitio mater studiorum est, so uh, it does not make uh, any <coughs> uh, any bad to, to go through some some details once again. But uh, first, I thought that I would make uh, such a short disclosure uh, also. Uh, explaining my relationship uh, uh, to IntelliCage um, and uh, and we bought uh, uh, purchased two first IntelliCages for University of Helsinki already in 2007 when they were uh, produced by New Behavior in, in Switzerland and uh, thereafter I spent three years um, uh, with Professor David Wolfer and also Hans-Peter Lipp in Zurich uh, uh, participating in EU-funded project IntelliMaze uh, which was uh, then uh, focusing and um, uh, meant for, for validation and development of IntelliCage and, and all the add-ons. And then when I returned to Helsinki, then of course I, I purchased uh, a few more IntelliCages because I really think that this is a unique system and uh, just to state that uh, all uh, equipment and instruments, uh, the purchases are really based on interest in good science and research. We obviously have uh, many more uh, 
equipment from uh, different companies uh, in, in our unit and facility. But uh, before talking uh, about IntelliCage, uh, I uh, uh, would like to take to you to the roots of the IntelliCage. And uh, it's a small village uh, in uh, 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 western part of uh, Russia, the biological research sta station Chisti Les, uh, or Clean Forest uh, in English. And uh, this place uh, uh, is famous uh, uh, by uh, as being an orphan beer rescue center. And uh, uh, you may find out uh, uh, more about this uh, uh, research uh, center on this website. And then there are several documentaries available, uh, fantastic work what they are carrying out. But uh, the same place uh, was then also discovered uh, by Hans Peter Lipp uh, through his uh, contacts with uh, with researchers at the Moscow University, and uh, together they set up there such a field station, outdoor bands uh, for uh, studying uh, uh, small uh, rodents uh, in uh, such naturalistic settings. So you can see there uh, such a. Uh, cottages uh, or uh, uh, feeder uh, stations uh, and animals were released uh, in these pens and then uh, through the transponders uh, that Holger already explained, uh, they were identified in different places uh, and the learning and, and the flexibility and survival uh, has been studied. And there are several papers, one example uh, is shown here about the mouse lion, which was shown to have a, a serious impairment in in Morris water maze. Uh, Holger explained also this test, uh, but uh, <clears throat> uh, but in this uh, naturalistic setting, uh, they were shown that uh, they in fact are able to to uh, form spatial memories, but they have a, a severe uh, impairment in behavioral flexibility. And based on all this work, uh, Hans Peter Lipp and, and colleagues then, uh, uh, in a way, scaled down this uh, outdoor pen into the IntelliCages with uh, four conditioning corners um, uh, that you already know from the previous presentation. And uh, here you can see uh, our setup uh, currently uh, at the Mouse Behavioral Phenotyping Facility in University of Helsinki. And we have all together six uh, uh, IntelliCages and uh, three controller PCs. So uh, we have uh, quite a freedom uh, to either run uh, all six cages with the same experiment or to divide them into, uh, into uh, smaller experiments uh, in two cages only uh, controlling uh, uh, from different computers. And uh, uh, that was also mentioned that uh, traditionally uh, behavioral laboratories are uh, full of uh, uh, various uh, equipment. And uh, in addition to uh, the problems that were mentioned previously, I would really say that, uh, that all these tests uh, suffer uh, of uh, one important uh, uh, problem. It's uh, namely uh, the animals are uh, observed in these uh, novel uh, and then possibly stressful environments after removing from the home cage for a very brief uh, time for uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. So all these tests are usually carried out under mm, uh, substantial stress uh, uh, on the animals. Uh, in addition, the problems of handling uh, the inconsistencies uh, between experimenters uh, and so on. So therefore, uh, it's uh, really uh, important to think about uh, uh, monitoring and collecting the data also uh, from uh, the place where animals spend uh, uh, most of their uh, time uh, in laboratory, in the home cage. And I would divide uh, uh, these uh, home cage approaches um, into home cage monitoring and home cage testing. So home cage monitoring, uh, here we have also a system from TSC, uh, but there are many, many other uh, 
uh, devices available. Uh, this is kind of uh, a passive uh, observation of the animals uh, uh, sp spontaneous or locomotor activity in the cage, uh, uh, food and water intake, uh, and, uh, and that's basically it. Uh, if you add their video camera, you can uh, uh, count some, uh, some ethological parameters perhaps. Uh, uh, but then another thing is uh, uh, really the testing of the animals in home cage. Uh, to, to assess their uh, behavior or, or like a cognitive functioning uh, and, and, and more. And for this type of research, uh, IntelliCage is, is really unique as, as already explained because it can house uh, uh, many mice uh, all together in the social context. Uh, and uh, what we can do with the IntelliCage uh, so the graphical drawing of the IntelliCage and the functional unit, the corner and animals entering in the corner. And I would uh, really stress uh, uh, the importance of uh, a very early period or initial part of the experiment uh, where actually you don't need to even program anything. Uh, this is the free exploration, the animals anyway. Uh, so it is not the standard home cage. It is a, uh, uh, again a novel uh, uh, arena, but it's very similar to home cage uh, containing the bedding uh, that is familiar from the home cage uh, and then the social uh, component. Uh, but still there is a, a need for adaptation, exploration, uh, familiarization with the corners, uh, where to get the water and so on. And uh, uh, based on these early characteristics and, and, uh, and data, we can uh, perhaps uh, uh, make some, some conclusions about uh, anxiety-like behavior, neophobia, uh, exploratory activity, behavioral stereotypes, uh, how the animals uh, uh, move from one corner to another corner, spontaneous alternation, and so on. And, and also eventually the circadian activity if we continue it for, for longer period. Uh, and after that, uh, uh, we are able, of course, to uh, design and then conduct a range uh, of, uh, of different procedures, uh, uh, the temporal conditioning, uh, uh, the uh, protocols uh, dependent on, on certain time uh, during a, a light dark cycle. And, and this is also an important feature compared to standard testing because uh, Many laboratories uh, do not have a possibility to use a reversed uh, uh, light cycle. And uh, this is also often criticized that we test animals during their uh, uh, light period, inactive period. Uh, in IntelliCage, in such a long term monitoring system, you can uh, uh, assign these critical parts of the experiments. Uh, uh, to the active uh, uh, phase of, uh, of the light uh, cycle. And other things were already uh, mentioned uh, previously. Uh, so uh, I, I, I make also here the statement that uh, automated testing of socially kept mice is a powerful, efficient and animal friendly tool for dissecting complex features and behavioral profiles of various mouse models. Um, and, uh, and uh, to support and justify this thesis, uh, I present uh, or show you three uh, 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 publications, uh, which uh, is the result of the work uh, uh, in Zurich 2007-2010. And one of the first things, of course, as it was a, a, a project where several laboratories were involved, we wanted to further understand and verify the reproducibility uh, of uh, behavioral phenotypes. And this study was carried out in, in four laboratories. We used uh, uh, three uh, uh, different uh, strains of mice. And uh, what we found also in this multi laboratory study. The behavioral, uh, the differences between inbred mouse strains uh, were really consistent. So we didn't have any significant uh, uh, genotype by laboratory interaction for uh, most of, uh, of critical or major parameters. Then another uh, thing was that by, uh, by 2013-14 we uh, 
the laboratory in Zurich had uh, tested already more than 1,500 mice in the IntelliCage uh, according to quite standard uh, protocols, especially regarding the first seven days, the, the adaptation period. And uh, based on these data, uh, mainly David Wolfer uh, was able to carry out the principal component analysis and showing that this spontaneous behavior, uh, this uh, seven days of, uh, of data uh, is very uh, co convincingly and uh, discriminating the strains, uh, the lesions and also the genetic mutations uh, in, uh, in the mice. And uh, uh, the third line of, uh, of work for further validation and development of, of different protocols in the IntelliCage was testing of, uh, of uh, different brain lesions, uh, hippocampal, prefrontal and striatal lesions. And, uh, and this paper was uh, published uh, finally, eventually a few years ago. Uh, where we show that uh, uh, hippocampal lesions, uh, uh, lesioned mice, uh, show a very distinct uh, behavioral uh, uh, profile. And it, uh, in many uh, uh, respects, uh, uh, resembles uh, uh, and confirms the, the findings from a standard uh, conventional uh, testing. And if you uh, want to have more coverage on, on different uh, uh, protocols and, and how this in, uh, tool has been used uh, over the last 20 years, uh, I refer you also to this uh, paper by Anna Kirk and, and her colleagues uh, from Poland. Uh, very good review about uh, uh, various aspects of, uh, of IntelliCage. A uh, few more examples, just uh, just uh, trying to uh, uh, tell you uh, that always uh, when we talk about such a, a novel, I, I wouldn't say anymore that IntelliCage is novel, but uh, but uh, uh, it's still uh, different from standard uh, by many means uh, considered as a standard test. Um, uh, it's a uh, different, and people always ask uh, how. Uh, uh, these uh, uh, traditional findings uh, could be reproduced in the IntelliCage. And here is an example of uh, uh, basic locomotor activity and exploratory activity in, in the open field for free uh, inbred strains 129, Black 6 and DBA. And uh, you may know that they differ quite significantly in the open field behavior. Uh, black 6 high activity, DBA moderate and 129 very low. And also uh, regarding the activity in the center part, uh, uh, which is a proxy for uh, avoidance uh, behavior, black 6 are more active there. DBA has such a development uh, towards uh, more exploration, where, whereas 129 has a, a decrease. So uh, this uh, initial one hour or six hours uh, discriminated these three strains uh, uh, in a very similar way. Uh, so black six most active, DBA moderate and 129 uh, the least uh, active uh, uh, group uh, of animals. Also reproducibility was, uh, was mentioned several times. Um, here is one of my examples, uh, two different batches uh, ordered uh, at different time points, uh, showing uh, again very similar uh, activity over first six hours in the IntelliCage for Black 6, uh, for DBA and for 129 strain. And uh, also the IntelliCage appears to uh, be more uh, predictable uh, for uh, uh, repeated exposure. Uh, if we compare two tests uh, done uh, in interval of, uh, of about uh, four to six months uh, with the same animals, uh, then open field uh, activity had a very low uh, uh, co correlation, whereas uh, IntelliCage uh, uh, 
activity, number of corner visits showed very high uh, correlation between these two uh, test uh, occurrences. And here I uh, present uh, one of my, uh, in a way, uh, favorite uh, uh, learning tasks uh, in IntelliCage, uh, combining the learning and then flexibility. Uh, it was also tested and validated during uh, my time in Zurich together with Japanese uh, colleagues uh, and uh, we called it uh, at that time flexible sequencing. So the animals uh, need to learn uh, shuttling between two opposite corners. Uh, at the same time, two other corners are never rewarded. So after obtaining the water reward in, in one corner, the animal for the next reward has to move to opposite corner. After collecting the, uh, or obtaining water there, it has to move back again to the opposite corner. And so up the, uh, to learn this uh, uh, patrolling or shuttling between two corners. And uh, uh, with this uh, uh, type of experiment, we can, in a uh, principle, test uh, uh, two types of, uh, of memories or errors. The working memory error would be the re-entering uh, the corner, which was just rewarded, but does not, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, the correct corner, but uh, not for this particular visit. And then also the reference memory errors, uh, the visiting uh, the corners, which are never rewarded. And then to make it more uh, challenging and to assess also the flexibility, uh, we can after initial learning, uh, so here you can see the, the percentage of correct visits due to correct corner, uh, we can uh, change the direction of, uh, of patrolling, so uh, to, to other two corners. And uh, you can see here then the, so-called reversal effect, uh, the animal's uh, uh, performance uh, drops down and then it uh, increases again over the uh, consequent uh, sessions. Uh, what is interesting also to note that with every uh, following uh, uh, reversal, this uh, dropping is uh, uh, less and less prominent. Uh, so the animals uh, should have already a uh, kind of memory or uh, learned uh, the strategy. So only, uh, so, so they very quickly uh, catch up again the normal uh, uh, performance. And uh, this was tested uh, uh, recently in uh, one uh, genetically modified mouse line. And again, I can show a comparison uh, between water maze learning, where initial learning to the place uh, was rather similar between wild type and knockout mice. But when we move the platform to the opposite quadrant uh, to study the flexibility and reversal learning, then the knockouts were in trouble. Uh, something similar happened in IntelliCage. So the acquisition of this shuttling was uh, uh, pretty similar between two groups, but uh, with uh, every reversal, it seemed that knockouts uh, performed worse and worse uh, compared to wild type uh, mice. And uh, another uh, uh, interesting example, in my uh, uh, opinion, is testing of motor impulsivity. You may be familiar with uh, uh, five choice serial reaction time task, uh, which is uh, very much uh, used by many laboratories uh, for this type of uh, uh, experiments. But what is uh, interesting and also worrisome to, to uh, hear and learn that uh, this uh, training of the animals can take uh, considerable amount of time. In this paper, they reported that uh, approximately four months uh, it took uh, until the animals were trained to the criterion. Uh, however, they found the difference in black six between black six and TBA mice, uh, uh, the black six uh, being more accurate. 
we have uh, designed a little bit similar uh, testing for IntelliCage, where the animals uh, start uh, the trial by themselves to, by making the first no spoke on one uh, side uh, of the of the corner, and then they have to wait so the gate or door to the water does not open immediately. The animals have to wait the random uh, delay period, one to four or even five seconds. Uh, and after that, the door is opening. If the animal makes a no spoke before that delay is uh, over, it is co uh, considered as an error and animal has to leave the corner and start the trial uh, again. And only with uh, in, in eight days, uh, we were, for example, able to uh, see the similar difference in accuracy between black six and TBA mice. So at the delay one of one second, two seconds and three seconds, they started from the same uh, level, but then uh, by the middle of testing and end of testing, black six were uh, clearly more accurate, uh, making less, uh, less errors. And my final example is uh, uh, from the same uh, mutant mouse study as uh, as I showed for for learning experiment. Here uh, I uh, can show the comparison between uh, home cage monitoring in inframot system and in telecage, uh, the circadian activity in uh, uh, in inframot cage. The animals are single housed. And we saw a significant increase uh, uh, or higher activity during nighttime uh, in knockout animals. We didn't see the same difference in the IntelliCage. Uh, however, what we uh, what was similar was the water consumption. So uh, the knockout mice uh, drank more uh, water, and they uh, tremendously increased. Uh, uh, liquid intake when we did a choice test water and saccharin so both uh, uh, both liquids available so they drank a lot of saccharin so that was increased uh, this finding was compared in uh, uh, confirmed in intellicage as well so the knockout mice drinking more when only water uh, was available and uh, uh, enhanced drinking uh, or increased drinking when saccharin also was made available. And uh, uh, this just to uh, tell that that my uh, like a typical battery in the IntelliCage for basic uh, uh, phenotyping uh, uh, or screening uh, of, of new mutant lines, for example, is going through the following steps, uh, uh, free adaptation, uh, to the cage, then no spoke adaptation. The animals learn to make the no spoke open the uh, door in order to get the water. Then we still use drinking sessions for motivating animals to uh, to visit the corners in certain time periods. Uh, then learning uh, according to this flexible sequencing uh, sequencing paradigm. Impulsivity I explained and delay discounting where the animals uh, uh, have to wait uh, for uh, a sweet uh, saccharin uh, solution to be available and how long they can wait. And uh, this is my uh, my conclusions and then summary here, the advantages of the IntelliCage, uh, pretty much uh, uh, the same as, as Holger already uh, uh, presented. But also some cautions. Uh, uh, the interpretation of the results can still be complicated or affected either by isolation or social interaction, depending on the system used. So we often uh, have the questions about how the animals affect each other and then need to explain it. Uh, then the data analysis uh, can still be uh, challenging and also the assessment of quality of the data. And uh, for every research question, there is uh, no all in one system. Uh, all different technologies uh, that are available or combination of them uh, would allow viewing or testing the different aspects of, uh, of animal uh, life in uh, home cage. 
thank you for attention. So I wonderful sharing. <laughs> So thank you so much, Votela, for a perfect presentation and for all the beautiful results and uh, showing that you can do a lot more than yeah, just uh, simple tests in IntelliCage. Uh, I think that's very, very interesting. So I actually had a question um, regarding your flexible sequencing task um, because you saw very nice uh, differences between the groups there. Did you house the knockouts together with the wild types or can you say something about the group constellation? Yes, usually we uh, house them together. Uh, so knockouts wild types, but this is an interesting question. So uh, uh, we know about uh, uh, papers and data uh, where uh, if, if uh, strains or mutant lines are mixed or separated, their behavioral performance may, di uh, may differ. So it is possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah super. Um, let's see if we have any more questions that were popping in. I think we are sort of running out of time, but we'll make sure that, um, you know, you can always uh, contact us if you have questions showing up later. Um, and I've seen that we had some questions on the design, and that's something that you showed really nicely, Votella, that you can do so much with the design of the IntelliCache protocols, which can make it tricky because you have to learn. Uh, but it's really fun when you do understand how to design and you can do a lot more than uh, what is mostly published in the standard uh, procedures. So uh, just to let you know, the audience, that there is a plan of doing uh, this uh, webinar again. It will be reoccurring and we uh, will focus on one session on the designer so we can go a bit more deeper into how to think and how to design a file and more about the possibilities that you can do with this system. So feel free to keep an eye open for that. Let's see. Um, let's see if we have any more questions. We have one more minute. Um, I don't know if we see. Yeah, and the question if we can have more advanced workshops um, to go more in deep uh, in depth. Of course, now it was a short uh, webinar when you can only phase a little bit about it. Um, but um, absolutely, if your wish is that we would do that, um, I think that's definitely going to be the future. I think this uh, we have just scratched the surface now, but Votella is really, really lovely presentation. Thank you so much for for showing the comparison between the traditional tests and what you can do in the IntelliCage. That's really, really nice. So I think we will wrap it up. Um, if there is any questions coming up uh, afterwards, like it always is, when you think, oh, why didn't I ask that? Please feel free to contact uh, us or Votele, and you can also join the LinkedIn group. Uh, just reach out and we'll try to answer everything that you're asking. So if no other comments, um, I think we will finish off today. We have uh, six o'clock um, and we'll just uh, send you an email to everyone in the audience with the links to uh, the video and also with the questions if there are some remaining. I have to be more multitasking. I can't read and talk at the same time. So we'll make sure to answer everything. And we wish you all a lovely evening. Thank you for joining us and stay tuned for the next ones. We'll go more, a bit more, more and more in depth uh, in the IntelliCages.